and I'll tell you what the video was about. Anybody seen on Facebook where the guy, the, uh, the pastor is getting ready to baptize the little boy? And he's talking and he's exalting and all that. And the little boy just looks up and baptizes himself. It would have been much more funnier if I had the video. And it's just so amazing because he was like, you taking too long. Like, this thing right here, come on, let's speed this up. I'm already nervous about being in this pool and in this water. And he just baptized himself and stood up and put his hands up like, glory to God. <laughs> and as comical as that sounds, we do God like that all the time. Amen. While he's preparing something for us, we get tired and we're going to do it ourselves. And sometimes our life is the fruit of doing it ourselves. We're on this series of what season is this, and we've been having a good time navigating change through the seasons of life. And we see what season it is today. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And so we talked about while there are natural seasons, they're parallel to spiritual seasons. And so we talked already about spring being the season of growth. But we did be clear about that, that it's not the manifestation of growth, it is the initiation of growth. We told you last week to watch your what? To watch your mouth. Because your words plant seeds in this fertile season. The ground is ready to receive whatever you have placed in it. And it's going to bring forth a harvest. And see, I think we walk around and we try to blame everybody else for what's growing in our lives. We want to blame mama, daddy, cousin, husband, wife. We, everybody else is the reason why you have going on what you're going on. But the truth of the matter is, it's because you sowed it that you're reaping it. Uh-oh. And even if you didn't sow it, you allowed somebody else to sow that seed. And so when the harvest comes, we don't like what we've gotten. But instead of just sowing different, we sit and complain and cry and stay in that same place and keep sowing the same things. And you keep getting the same things. If you don't like apples, you got to stop planting apple seed. And the thing about a seed is it just don't give you one apple. You're going to have apple sauce, apple jelly. Remember Forrest Gump, barbecue shrimp, boil it. I'm tripping. Today, we're going to move to summer. I know it don't look summer outside. But in this season of summer in your spiritual life, it's called the season of waiting. Oh, Lord. After the seed is in the ground, there's nothing else we can do but wait. Patience is a curse word. Amen. I tell people all the time, people say, I paid for patience and then everything broke out. That's what was supposed to happen. Because you don't know patience without trials. See, the word patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay without getting angry. Oh, look. We get angry if the fast food line takes too long. Not at Chick-fil-A, though. Joshua work at Chick-fil-A. Everybody go see him one day this week. I told him I was going to tell everybody. That's what happens to you, the preacher kid, man. You just pray for him. But we get, we get upset when the things that are supposed to be quicker than normal take too long. If you got to wait five minutes for your fries, we get an attitude. We have conditioned a society of right now. We don't want to wait for nothing. We don't want to wait for our hair to grow. We go buy some. Come on, church. And I don't got no problem with it. I'm not knocking nobody. I was with a pastor last night. She kept saying, judge your mama. <laughs> I'm just saying, we, we just, we want instant. We want it right now. We don't, we don't want to wait for anything. Now Amazon got Prime, right? 
Oh, y'all know about prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. We order so much stuff, I be giving the prime guy a gift, uh, a gift for Christmas. Because he stay at my house. But do you know now 24 hours the next day ain't good enough? You can order and get it between 5 and 10, girl. I think Amazon got drones. They're going to just start dropping stuff at your house. We don't like to wait. We don't want to wait for anything. We don't want to sit in traffic. Oh, some of y'all in traffic. Especially when it's not the time of day that it's supposed to be traffic. It will upset your whole day. I'm going to give you a, a word of advice. Road rage is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. But it's something about road rage will bring something up out of you. Words that you ain't used in a long time. Deacon flipping people off in traffic. Not y'all. Not y'all. I'm just saying. Talking to the people out there, all y'all that's viewing. Hey. We don't like to wait. Especially when it comes to our prayers being answered. We don't like to wait. We work out three days and you get on that scale and you expect there to be a change. Now you done had 30 years of bad eating, but three days? Chris, don't be looking at me. We expect results right away. I went to the gym three days. I should have Angela Bassett arms by now. God ain't giving me Angela Bassett arms because he know I'll be up here sleeveless with a microphone. <laughs> anyway, move on, move on, move on. Move on, move on Pastor, move on. Listen. <laughs> Y'all petty. When God's timing doesn't sync with your clock, what do you do? It's not working out like I have it planned. See, I have all these plans for my life, and things are supposed to be happening by now. I should be married by now. I should have the big house by now. I should be more established by now. But what happens when his timing doesn't sync with your clock? Can I tell you, there's two different types of timing. There's what we call kairos, and there's chronos. Chronos is chronological. It's 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Kairos is God's timing, and it is a God moment, meaning he can step in at any time and change your, your situation. So the question becomes, Malik, if he has the power to step in and change it at any time, why hasn't he done so? Because it's something he's working out in you. We go back, move on, Pastor. <laughs> oh, he said, move on, move on. We go back to the life of Joseph. We've been talking about Joseph for the last two weeks and understanding what happened. He had a dream. He started telling people, his brothers and sisters, they was going to bow to him. You knew that wasn't going to end well. He got a coat. He was the favorite. They threw him in the pit, threw him into slavery. But he got to Potiphar's house. He thought everything was great. He was head over Potiphar's house. He was running things. He was managing things. Life was pretty good. And then all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife wanted to lay with him. He was like, oh, no, God's been too good to me. I ain't messing that up. Mm -mm, no. But she, it was so, she trapped him. He ran outside naked. I, I'm, not, I'm not even about to say nothing about that. Sometimes you should run. <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't never too late to run. But he gets thrown in jail. So 
for something he did not do. Now, come on, you know how we are. We pray for things, but have you ever been accused of something that you did not do? I lived that way. I remember being in a pit for something that I did not do. And you're sitting there, and the days are going by, and he sat there, and the days went by, and the years went by, and he was sitting in this pit for something he did not do. He had to wait. He helped the people in the jail, the butcher and the baker, and told them, now remember me when you get to the king. They ain't remember him. You don't know people don't be remembering you. Like Kelly said this morning, they act like you call to act like it's the bill collector. They don't, people don't think of you because they're programmed to think of themselves. The first law of nature is self-preservation. But can you imagine just waiting? Anybody in here been waiting for God to do something? To answer something? There's a couple of examples in the Bible. The woman, she was waiting 18 years. It don't say how long the prodigal was gone, but it do say that the father met him before he saw him afar off, so he had been looking out that window a long time. How you act while you wait? James chapter 1, 2 to 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There is a purpose in your waiting. It is things happening in your waiting that is making you entire. God's not going to give it to you yet because you're not ready. But it's not that he's telling you no, he's telling you. He's not saying that you can't have a husband. He's saying I'm working on you being a wife. He's not saying you can't have the promotion. I'm working, up your, I'm working on your stewardship with the money you got. He's not saying you can't have the car. You just need to get your stewardship together so you'll take care of it this time. It's working in you to make you perfect, lacking nothing when you've waited on it. I tell this story to young people all the time. We teach to keep yourself to marriage for, um, until you get married. I remember when my husband and I have been knowing each other probably all our lives. But when we finally found out that this is what God had for us, we said, we're going to keep ourselves until we got married. You talking about waiting? some struggling days. There were times he put me out the dorm room. But all the wait was well worth it because we did it the way God said. So when my young people tell me, oh, that's old-fashioned, we can't do that no more, you're looking at an example. When both of you are on one accord, I didn't say nothing about being no virgin or nothing else. What I said was, we decided to wait. But in that waiting, God began to show me things in me that I need to fix before I walk down that aisle. See, I wasn't clouded by the lust and the sexual affection. All the flags was able to be seen. Y'all know y'all see them flags. Come on now. Ta 
talking about he crazy. You knew he was crazy a long time ago. But when you're clouded, you can't see because you're satisfying your flesh. Oh, I'm stepping on toes today. Listen, I'm, I, I'm not telling y'all nothing. I'm not judging nobody. Pastor last night, she kept saying, judge your mama, judge your mama. I, I'm not. I, I'm just giving you my testimony. But the waiting works out something in you. And don't miss me. I don't want the spirit of condemnation to come in here on nobody. We're all free in Christ Jesus. Don't let it, don't let it jump on you. Come on, shake it off. Don't let it jump on you. But I'm showing you what happened in the waiting. And now 23 years late, we still loving each other even more than we did on that day 23 years ago. Let patience Making you entire, lacking nothing. Because at the end of the day, you must trust him. You see the memes on, 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 uh, on social media where it's a figure of Jesus, because that ain't Jesus. But it's a figure of Jesus, and he's asking the little girl for a small teddy bear. But he has a huge teddy bear behind his back. And he's asking her to give it to him, trust him with it. And she's going, but I can't. He said, will you trust me? We need to be able to trust him in our waiting. That although it hasn't shown up yet, God, I trust that you're making it good and perfect just for me. I don't want nothing half done. You ever seen some chicken? I'm a chicken connoisseur. And it better be done, done. I mean dead done. And ain't nothing like biting into a piece of chicken. I won't eat. I won't eat for the rest of the day. I, mm -mm. But if he listens to us, He'll give you it half done. We want it perfect, lacking nothing. Some things you prayed for would have took you out if he gave it to you when you asked him. You'd have ruined a perfect relationship if you got it before time. You say it's tight, but it's right. So what are you doing? Patience is not the ability to wait, but it's how you act while you're waiting. Some of us look like toddlers in the spirit. You falling out all in the floor. You kicking and screaming and all like you're two years old because God's not giving you what you want or it's not coming fast enough. Oh, just because y'all don't do it in public, you think people don't know that you're having a whole fit at home. Your prayer becomes a, a, a whining session because God just won't move and then you like the little boy who baptized himself, you just go and do it yourself. And you be in a worse situation than you were before. It's not the fact of waiting. I don't mind. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. But it's how you act while you're waiting. go to a restaurant and there's a waiter or a waitress what are they doing they're serving if you take your
your focus off of waiting and put your focus on waiting, it's how you act. Some of you are impatient because you're not moving, you're not serving while you wait. Oh, read your Bible, girl. She was serving while she was waiting. And somebody was watching. <laughs> Whatever the situation is, I dare you to start to serve. Happen? Is it gonna happen today? Is it gonna? I'm gonna tell you that recruiting season for me was the worst thing ever. You waiting on phone calls, you waiting on, on on coaches to call, and if they like you, and if they, I, oh my goodness, I'm hating. I'm going into it again for the second time because you're so obsessed with the waiting. But when you take your focus off of the waiting, put your focus serving and you're going to look up and it's going to be there how many people waiting on something whatever it is you're, you're waiting take this song with me I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't. Mind One more time, sing it like you mean it. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you. I don't mind waiting. I don't. Surrendered to waiting today. We ask you, God, to remind us to serve while we're waiting. For we know for a fact you're going to come through. You come through every time. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. Teach us, God, to wait and, to how, and how to act while we're waiting. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise. I don't mind where. 